You can find a seat here. We're going to sing Count Your Blessings, name them one by one. We want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving week as we just lift up our voices to the Lord and thankfulness for everything that he's done. All right, go ahead and grab a seat and stand with us if you will. Count your blessings. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. At others with their lands and gold, thinks that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings, money cannot buy your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one count your many blessings see what god has done so amid the conflict whether great or small do not be discouraged god is over all count your many blessings angels will not tend help and comfort give you to your journey count your blessings name them one by one your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Amen. Well, we know you can't greet each other with a handshake because of COVID today. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell them you're a blessing, all right? All right. We're going to welcome you all here. You can sing along with us on this next song that I love, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon.
Kathy's Valley Baptist Church. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer and give the Lord thanks so we can be in his house once again to worship. Father, we come before you. We thank you for this time together. We ask and pray that you just would bless this hour as we spend time together in your word, that it would touch our hearts and change us, motivate us to do great and mighty things for your word. We thank you for um, our nation. We ask and pray for um, safety, freedom, and just a calm spirit. We pray for our community, Lord, with all the COVID going around, that you would just bring health to us, Lord God, that you would just give us strength and whatever comes for us. And uh, Lord, we do give you thanks for being a God and being in control of everything. We just uh, submit to your will now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. A couple announcements. You can watch us live stream. Uh, on Facebook, Kathy Valley Baptist Church, also videos. You can YouTube us as well. Uh, if you're worried about COVID, you can do that as well. Uh, welcome for those who are listening online with us. We know there's a few who are real faithful. We appreciate that. Um, we do, uh, again, attention cleaners. Church cleaners need help. One more couple. So if you can do that, you got to really be more ready to sanitize and make sure that we are above board getting rougher and rougher, going backwards, um, but uh, do your best to uh, do what you have to do to keep healthy. And um, ladies' prayer walk uh, the first and third Wednesdays of the month. See Anna. Also come join the men at Miners in the Men's Breakfast. I'm not sure how long that will last, um, the way things are going, um, but if they don't, they'll put us back outside probably. So we'll keep you informed on that, but 8 a.m. Miners in on Wednesdays as well. We're also thankful that uh, I got a, just a blessing I'll share with you. Our kids are moving up. They bought a house here in Kathy Valley. Uh, so Austin and Crystal will be coming and hopefully joining us. And then it will be a blessing to see them fellowship with us and my grandkids, more grandkids, fill this church up. So we're really thankful and we're blessed by that as well. So good news all around and God bless you. Well, there's so much to be thankful for. And I think it's never a question of how much do we have to be thankful for, but um, is our heart truly filled with all the thankfulness um, that it ought to be? And that's what this next song is about. My heart is filled with thankfulness. My heart is filled with thankfulness to Him who bore my pain, who found the depths of my disgrace. Who crushed the curse of sinfulness and clothed me with his life and wrote his law of righteousness with power upon my heart. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who walks who floods my weaknesses with strength and causes tears to fly? Whose every promise is enough for every step I take? Sustaining me with arms of love and crown. is filled with thankfulness to him who reigns above whose wisdom is my perfect peace whose every thought is love for every day i have on earth is given by the king so Have one last song. If you'd like to stretch your legs, we'll give you an opportunity. Give thanks with a grateful heart.
give thanks. Next song, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Open our Bibles. Let's open all those to the book of Philippians, chapter number four. This time we're going to be dismissing the children to Children's Church and their worship services over here through the double doors. So you guys go ahead and make your way out there. Um, we're going to grab our Bibles. We're going to be moving through the Scriptures. Um, I know I said Philippians 4. You want to put a finger there, and then we'll go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and that's where we'll start our reading. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 is where we'll start our reading there together. If you have a Bible, uh, we would love if you could join with us and turn through those pages. Don't be afraid to give it a try. We have our uh, cheat sheet here on the screens. All the verses there should be listed and that way, um, if you don't find it, you can move along with us. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 8. We welcome you on this Thanksgiving week. We're so excited about the weekend, about the opportunity to spend time with family and in thankfulness. And I just want to say I am thankful for all of you. And what a blessing it is um, that people faithfully gather to worship the Lord. And um, I, we just had, we've had a great week this week. We had our our final box pack, and a lot of you packed a Christmas box. How many of you packed a Christmas box, an actual box, okay? And then a lot of individuals donated, right? And you were able to donate, and, and we had uh, one of our, uh, Lisa went out and a couple of the teens there, and they just bought like so much stuff, you wouldn't believe it. we had tables filled up here in the back, in the fireside room there, and uh, we packed boxes all uh, Wednesday evening, we were able to enjoy that, and I think we're uh, going to be well over 100 this year. We had 99 was what we had on Wednesday night, so we're assuming there's even more today. Um, we'll say this is the last day to get those boxes in. We're going out this afternoon. If you don't have it with you, um, you need to see uh, Wes and Lisa there. They, they can help you um, if you want to get those boxes down. We have to drop them off um, by tomorrow at a certain time, and they're going today. They're going out, so uh, if you can... Uh, help us with that if you have a Christmas box. We just want to thank everyone who packed one. A, a blessing this year, over half of the boxes were paid for. Someone that didn't have time to pack a box gave um, all the shipping costs, afraid those, and we're able to do a, a great thing. I really believe that Christmas is the time to give to others. Jesus said that what you've done for the least of these, you've done to me. And we often, uh, I, you know, I'm all for getting uh, gifts for me on Jesus' birthday, but uh, you better give a gift to Jesus too, and it's a great opportunity to do that. And we have these out going out pretty early because we want them to be in the hands of others. Now before, um, before we get into the message, I just want to give you one final note on this. Uh, if you have kids and you want to track your box, you can actually do that um, there's a, in the boxes, there's on the little uh, label there, if you pay the extra $3 or whatever, uh, you can go online and put your label number in and you can watch your box go throughout Christmas season and you can see where it ends up. The kids and I paid for that. Uh, we tracked it partway in Africa and that was the end of it. We don't know what happened after that. We got bored by Christmas, but we did have a good time watching it for a little while. If you want to do that, there is a way to do that online. Um, and uh, if you need any, if you have any questions about that, maybe afterwards I can help you with that. Um, it's pretty simple. There's some, still some flyers on the back, and uh, you can do that. And that's kind of fun for the kids sometimes to see where your box ends up, and you can kind of see who opened it, and it's kind of a neat opportunity, and they've offered that this year. So um, I want you to continue to pray for those boxes. With each box goes the gospel, right? 
We want to pray that those children that receive the love of Christ um, with material things will also receive the love of Christ in truth, that is, in the message of Jesus and his salvation. So we'll continue to pray there. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 5.18. We'll read there. We're going to move in through the scriptures, especially through the prison epistles here. Um, that would be um, Ephesians uh, and Colossians and Philippians, and we'll be moving around there. So we'll be in a nice narrow area. You don't have to turn too much, but we're going to start in Thessalonians 5.18 as we have our kind of theme verse here. All right. Let's read it together, shall we? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let this be the theme for our Thanksgiving week and for the rest of this year in everything. That's what I want to talk about, thankfulness in everything. Let's pray. Dear Lord, as we open the word, uh, we know that You've promised that where two or three are gathered, you're here, Lord, and we're focusing on your word as a means of worship. Change us, Lord, giving us a thankful heart. I pray that we're, as, as believers, that we could go out throughout this week and anyone here um, could have a heart filled with thankfulness, would be able to give um, a thankful answer in every situation, in every prayer, in every difficulty. And Lord, that we would realize that there's just not a situation where thankfulness should ever expire. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Boy, this is a tall order. You know, they tell you when you're a kid, right, not to say always and never. Yeah. You never let me do this. You always, they say you're supposed to say most of the time, and I try to teach my kids that, you know, and that's kind of a grammatical thing that we do. You're not supposed to say never and always, but there's a handful of really uh, important areas where these words are appropriate. And I want to talk about that in everything. Give thanks. Boy, that is a tall order, is it not? I mean, uh, yesterday I was working and I had, uh, and I had my hand stuck between uh, a wire and a fence post, right? And it was hard to be thankful, <laughs> Right? Some of you this week may have had a health problem or a, a serious financial issue or maybe some difficulty in your life, and it can be hard to be thankful in everything, can it? Yes, Brother Mick knows that today, doesn't he? It's hard to be thankful when difficult times, difficult situations come down the pike. But the Bible teaches us that thankfulness is an abiding attitude in the lives of every believer. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about in everything the universal application of thankful thinking in everything. And let's just uh, begin here with the reality. I believe that the Christian always has a reason to be thankful. That the Christian always has a reason to be thankful. And when I say reason, I don't mean in the past. I mean that thankfulness, doing it now, gets a, you get a benefit from it. That being a thankful person is always a good idea. The future good things come from a present thankfulness. I believe every Christian has a reason to be thankful today because it will help you. Number two, I believe that every Christian has a right to be thankful. I use the words reason and right because I want to say this. I want to say that we have a right to be thankful because we've been blessed. I believe that every Christian not only has to be thankful for what he's about to receive from that thankful attitude, but also for what he's had in his life. How many of you think that you have at least one thing to be thankful for today? And that one thing is still good in the next problem, and you think it will be good enough. How many of you think you have something in your life you'll be able to be thankful for when the next problem comes in? Anybody else? Okay, there's a few of us, right? We have things to be thankful. Every Christian has a reason to be thankful. Every Christian has a right to be thankful. And lastly, I believe that every Christian has a requirement set upon him by God to be thankful thankful a requirement that means and, and i want to say this finally i believe that the bible teaches us god commands us you be thankful don't let the next problem the next difficulty the next challenge or even the next lull in your physical excitement in your life right don't let that be a reason not to be thankful because god does not allow it christians should be thankful people Amen. we don't have a right look maybe if you don't believe in god you can decide when you want to be thankful and when you don't want to be thankful. 
But today, if you're a Christian, you don't get that right. You have a requirement from God, and everything God said to these Thessalonians, one of the last things he said, by the way, this is the will of God. How many of you ever had somebody ask you, what's God's will for my life? How many of you ever asked yourself, what does God want for me in the future? Well, I could give you one here. This is always a great way to start. Be thankful. Be thankful. God's will for your life is that you would be a thankful Christian in every aspect, in every pursuit, in every situation. I just, I believe this can be done. I really do. I believe, uh, and I do not believe this because I have done it. Let's be clear about that. Not the most thankful human being in the world here, just so we're clear. Um, I'm married to one of the most thankful human beings in the world, but I'm not currently one of those people. But I'm working hard of it. How many of you projects when it comes to Thanksgiving? Anybody? Thankfulness is a challenge for you, okay? Yes, some of us are like this. Maybe you call yourself a pragmatist or a realist, right? (laughs) Maybe you call yourself even a pessimist. But God tells you that to be a, a right Christian doing what God wants you to do, you got to be thankful. And you have a reason. I'm telling you, if you don't know what it is, you have it. I was just uh, reading a story about this great king, and he had a close friend. They liked to go hunting together. Of course, not. this is olden days, so bow and arrow hunting, not gun hunting, right? So they go out into the woods, and he sees a bird, and he pulls back his bow, and he lets it go, but he made a little mistake, and he chopped a thumb off. And, uh, of course, the man next to him was a Christian, and he said, praise God, he's always in control. The king is furious, just lost his thumb. He threw that guy in jail. He said, how dare you be thankful when a king lost his thumb? That is offensive. Of course, uh, this man was in jail, so now the king had to go hunting by himself. So uh, a few months later, he was out hunting, and he kind of strayed into a far country somewhere where um, he hadn't been before, and there were cannibals. And he was captured by these cannibals. They tied him up and they dragged him over their big boiling cauldron and they, they took him out and were taking a close look at him and they said, oh, no perfect, no cookie. No thumb. Let him go. And he was like, whoa, man, that saved my life. He said, I can't believe it. my friend was right. And he went, he went straight to the jail and he says, oh, I'm so sorry. You were right. These cannibals were going to eat me, but I didn't have a thumb. And I was saved because I only have one thumb left. And the man said, his friend said, oh, man, praise God. Praise God. And he says, how can you praise God? You've been in jail for so long. And he said, look, two thumbs. <laughs> you know? And, you know, you can be thankful in every situation. All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about real application. When should the Christian be thankful? What can thankfulness do for the believer? And what does the Bible say about it throughout the Word? Let's open our Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter number 4. Now, this is easy. If you're in Thessalonians, it's the next book to your left. So it should be very simple. Philippians, you don't have to go just a few pages from 1 Thessalonians. Philippians 4 and verse number 6. So... You know, you could look at it a lot of different ways in life. A lot of us will have things that we're automatically thankful for. I know um, it's difficult in days like this, you know, in seasons like COVID or um, in maybe the divided nation that we're living in to be thankful. But the Bible teaches us we should do that. And I want to talk not only, I don't just tell you that we have to be thankful. I want to convince you that thankfulness is the right attitude. It's the right attitude. And not, because, not just because it's what God wants you to do, but because it's good for you. Because it's good for you. And I think this is maybe the big challenge. Let's go to the book of Philippians. And uh, I think I said it's the next book. We got, it's actually the second book out there. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 6. It says, be careful for nothing. The word careful, maybe some of you have a Bible that says anxious. And that's what we're talking about here. Full of care. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. The first situation where thankfulness should come to your heart and mind here that we're going to study is the situation of worry. How many of you are worried about the future today? How many of you are facing an area of your life where you are concerned? And you say, I'm worried. You know, the Bible teaches us that thankfulness is an attitude 
with which the believer approaches times of anxiety and care and worry. You should, again, maybe you're like me, right? Maybe you're like me and you will say, somebody will tell you because they're so godly and we hate these kind of people when we're really angry, right? When we hit our thumb and they're like, be careful what you say or when something bad happens, they're like, oh, just think about all the good things that you have and you're just angry because those nice people really make you sick, right? Do you ever feel that way? And it's hard to see how thankfulness is a helpful and a beneficial attitude in every situation, isn't it? But I want to say the scriptures teach us that in times when you're worried about what's going to happen next, thanksgiving is a crucial attitude. It's a crucial attitude. And I believe that thanksgiving will actually help you and not, not hinder you in getting over your problems. And I think what happens a lot of times is you lose something, and I say, be thankful, or somebody else might say, be thankful, and you're like, now wait a minute, how is being thankful really that helpful? I mean, I know that God says be thankful all the time, but come on, he didn't mean now, right? Do you, are you like this? Do you ever say God says everything, and you just say, well, it was like a suggestion? It was like a, like a maybe, kind of, well, yeah, maybe, maybe not, right? But the Bible teaches us here, he says that when you're worried, when you're anxious, he says that you're supposed to be thankful. You're supposed to be praying. You're going to make your supplication with the things that you want. You're going to make those known to God with thanksgiving. And listen to what it says in verse number 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Did you ever meet somebody who can be calm in intense situations? How many of you are not calm in intense situations? Raise your hand. Not the commerce, a couple people. Anybody here got, you're kind of those people, like you go into like, it gets easier for you, the crazier things are. Anybody clinch players here? I learned, I met some people, and I used to play basketball, I remember my big problem is I always get in my own head, right? When things get crazy, I usually get revved up with the situation, and then I have problems. But there's always a couple of those guys that just, it didn't really matter what was happening. I'm, I'm not even sure if they ever cared, Right? Did you ever hate those guys? Like, they don't run that hard in practice. They don't try that hard. They always win, and they always start, and they make all the baskets, and it makes you mad, right? Why are those people successful? And I've asked myself this so many times. Because they keep their head in intense situations. Because they're able, when everybody else is worried and scared, guess what they're doing? They're thinking clearly. I'll say this. In times of worry... One of the most valuable pursuits is to be thankful. To be thankful. Why? Because the Bible teaches us it calms us. It says the peace of God which passes understanding. How many of you want to endure the next crisis with somebody who freaks out? Right? Somebody who has a panic attack. How many want to be stuck in the water next to somebody who's afraid they're going to drown? Right? Right? nobody, right? That's crazy. We want people that are calm. How many of you want to be calm in a difficult situation? You know how we do this? I believe the Bible, maybe you're not the calm guy, maybe you're not the calm gal. The Bible teaches us, though, that we can experience the peace of God in our hearts as we participate in thankfulness. You know, you should be thinking in bad times, not, what did I lose? You'd be thinking about, what do I still have? What do I still have? Did you notice this? I love this about this passage. In worry, what most often are we found doing? Asking, right? When, you, when you're worried about the next situation, you're like, man, what are we going to do, right? And we say, how are we going to do this? Where's the money going to come from? See, we have questions, don't we? Questions, questions, questions. And we freak out. But the Bible says that we're supposed to, by prayer and supplication, and what's the next word? with thanksgiving. So you just, and, and I'm going to make this point, I think a lot of times people think that they're supposed to ask things of God, but there's a very valuable principle here I think we need to acknowledge. You can't truly have what you want or need unless you can be thankful for what you have. You cannot truly have what you want if you cannot be thankful for what you have. How many found out you get what you want and it's not good enough? What's the problem? Thankfulness. Wantonness. Maybe even you have what you need to overcome the situation already, but your panic keeps you from thinking clearly. 
your stress, your anxiety. See, the Bible teaches that thankfulness centers believers. It calms us. See, not only do we have blessings to be thankful for, but there are blessings that come from being thankful. You know, when things get really bad, people that know what they have that value real things are the ones that do well. They're the ones that overcome. See, I think Christians need to learn this lesson in times of worry, in times of anxiety and need. We're supposed to come to God. We might, have que- we might need stuff. Hey, if your cars roll over and you're locked in a seatbelt, you might need something sharp. You might. But if you don't take the time to look around at the, what's in the glove box, whether or not you could reach a piece of glass, you're never going to cut the seatbelt, right? You're going to remain in that bad situation. See, people who, can't, people who are concerned and filled with anxiety are not people that are truly thankful. The first thing a Christian should do when things go bad is look around. Because it's not what you've lost that is any longer significant to you. It's what you have, Right? It's what you have. And in every situation, whether you're in a physical calamity or a financial problem, whether you're dealing with your health, what do you, it's not what you lost that is important now. It's what you have. What strength do I have left? What tools do I have at my disposal? But do you know how we find that out? Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Try to be unthankful when you have a really bad financial problem, but then you talk about all the wonderful things about your spouse or your children. Remember these hard times when your parents told you something like my parents told me? We still have each other, right? And this is so important, isn't it? To count the blessings you have. Thankfulness will help you in times of anxiety and need. James 4, 3, we read this so many times. It says, you have not because you... You, you, you ask not, right? And then you ask and receive not. And here's James 4, 3, exactly. This is the second verse here. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. You know, the Bible teaches us it's not what we want that should bring us to asking. It's what we have and we're thankful for. It's where we get our strength to ask these things. And I really believe this. You cannot truly have what you want unless you're thankful for what you have. Desire will not get you ahead in difficult times. When you're worrying, it's thankfulness. And so he says this, how do I have the peace of God that passes understanding? And that's important too. God didn't say be thankful because we don't understand why you're not. I mean, it's perfectly understandable that we get overly excited when bad things happen, right? It's it's perfectly uh, human for us to to, to spiral out of control in times of weakness and worry, right? But the Bible teaches us that thankfulness gives us a peace that what? That passes understanding. That Christ, in His blessings, they offer something more than is even humanly maybe observable. You, can't, you cannot expect that you that you will fully understand what thankfulness will do for you until you start to act with a thankful heart. See, God says in times of worry, this is not the time to stop being thankful. This is a time to start being thankful, right? And do this. The next time you have a problem, start by thanking, right? Start by thanking the Lord. Tell God what you need, but don't, again, this is what Christians do so often. We, I want this God, and I want that God, and I want this God, and I got that. How come God's not giving me what I want? Because you're doing it wrong. The Bible says, with thanksgiving. Right? We're supposed to have that. And God taught us that the true asking that comes without thanking, that's not the biblical kind. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. How many of you think if you started to ask for some of the things you ask for on a daily basis, if you started with thanksgiving, you might not even ask? You ever think about that? Do you ever think about how many things we already have that we want and then just a little bit of thankfulness? I'll give you an example. Anybody here hate looking for your tools? How many people here would rather go buy a new tool so you get the job done than find your old tool? Raise your hand if you're that guy. 
that gal. Yeah, somebody here? Okay. I, I grew up with one of these gentlemen, right? Finding your tools is not important. Getting the job done is important. So never find the tools, always buy a new tool. And I used to say, look, look, why don't you pay me to find a tool, right? And then you will, but that it doesn't work anymore because I have a job now. But I just like, why would you buy a new tool? You already have that tool. I can't be looking for that tool. You know, I can't be doing that. I'm going to say this. That's, that's just a funny way of ripping my dad. But <clears throat> ultimately, ultimately in life, what we do oftentimes, God gave us all the tools we need for this situation already. But we're freaking out. Because thankfulness keeps us from asking th- for things that we already have. That we all. How many of you ever said something like this? Oh God, I need the strength. And then you found that you had it. Right? And you wonder maybe sometimes if I, and maybe at the end of this trial you look back and you go, God had prepared me for this a long time ago. Maybe we would discover those things if we counted our blessings before we count our problems. But we like to count our problems, right? We like to count our problems before we count our blessings. You can be thankful in every situation. A great example is Alexander White. He was just known. He's a Scottish preacher. He was known for his uplifting prayer. Always thankfulness. Just thankful, thankful, thankful. And one day, it had been a particularly bad week, and it was a, it was a nasty day. And then one of the church members, he came in, and he just, it was one of those times, and he goes, he really was sick of this guy being grateful all the time. He said, you know, he said, I'd like to go ahead and see what he could be thankful for today, you know. And the preacher got up, and his prayer sounded like this. Lord, we thank you that it's not always like this. <laughs> and there's always something to be thankful for. So times of worry, thankfulness. In times of watching, in times of watching, thankfulness. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 4, verse number 2. The book of Colossians. Um, it's in between Thessalonians and Philippians. You go to the right in your Bible just a little bit here. Colossians chapter number 4 and verse number 2. It says this. <clears throat> Continue in prayer. And here's weird words. Are you ready? And watch in the same with thanksgiving. Now, I'm an emergency kind of person. <laughs> when the problem is upon me, that's the time that I'm ready to start, you know, anybody here like that? You, you're like, okay, I'm in trouble. Now what do I do? Thankfulness. I forgot about that, right? But the Bible teaches us that thankfulness is not only for the times of worry. Thankfulness is also for the times of watching. That means a Christian's supposed to be ever vigilant, that just because nothing's happening today doesn't mean that Thanksgiving ends today. It says we're supposed to continue in prayer, watching in the same. Prayer is a way of watching, of looking. In other words, we're not in the battle, we're not in the fray, we're not in the trouble, we're not in the rejoicing, we're in the watching stage. Anybody in that stage of boredom between trouble and excitement, but just the daily thing, the continuing, right? And that's what it starts with, continue. In other words, be consistent, be continuous in prayer, right? And watch in the same with what? With thanksgiving. Thankfulness is not only for the problem times. The Christian should be in an eternal state of thankfulness. Well, nothing's wrong today, Pastor. So I didn't see the need to thank the Lord. Right? I mean, this is the way way I am. Emergency Christian, right? When things get really bad, then I got to then i got to get, get up and get ready, right? We do the things that we need. A lot of us do that. We wait to have a problem before we start looking into solutions. Thankfulness is something that we should be reciting in the watching. I love that word watching again. It reminds us of an old habit that we just don't have anymore, right? A day when your city had walls, and, and every day, all, you know, as soon as the as soon as the sun came up or whatever, the gates shut or whatever, there would be a guy on the tower. Maybe all day while well, the gates were open and closed, they would take shifts and there was always somebody watching. Watching for an attack, right? And, and this is just the old way, a very vigilant society. Now today you just assume your cell phone is watching, right? You have ring, you have, you have a, you know, you, my front door has a canary, right? Everybody's got some little noise maker that says, oh, somebody's here or somebody's trying to steal your stuff or this is a different life, right? We're talking about a day, remember the days of Nehemiah? The Bible said that they were working, they held a hammer in one hand and a sword in the other, right? I mean, these guys, they always had to be careful. They always were watching out. 
The Bible teaches that Christians, even though we live in a very modern age, and we might forget this, that Thanksgiving is supposed to be coupled with watchfulness. That even if nothing's wrong in your life, even if you don't see the need, you're supposed to be living a lifestyle of thankfulness. You're supposed to be thinking thankfully. Thankfully, I believe the Christian should on a daily basis be reciting what they're thankful for. Remind yourself. Remind your children. Remind your spouse. Remind your family. Remind your friends what God has done that is good. This is a, I believe this is a kind of watchfulness in the Christian's life. It's a kind of watchfulness. When do we so often get into trouble? When we're the most comfortable. And the Bible says we watch in the same. Prayer is a kind of watching, and we do that kind of watching with what? Thanksgiving. So whether you're in trouble, or whether you're in some kind of a middle, mediocre, moderate phase of your life, you're supposed to be thankful. Now, I I believe that thankfulness is really intentional. We have to do this. We have to make sure that we know that these things come for God. Here's something that happens. If you're not thankful for a little while, you know what will happen? You'll start to think that you did it yourself. Has anybody ever done this? It's been so long since you were thankful that that is now your car, and you fixed it. And that is your house, and you built it, and you bought it. You know what I'm saying? And that's your money, and you got it with the sweat of your brow, right? And these things can be true in, in a fashion, right? But there's an acknowledgement, isn't there, the Christian's supposed to have? Everything good comes where? Down from the Father of lights. The Bible teaches that everything good in this world is from God. And ultimately, God said this, man, you got these things, and where do you think you got the strength to get those things? Where do you think you got the life and the breath to live in these moments? Not from yourself, you got them from the Lord. Thankfulness is a kind of watching a Christian that does not maintain, a person doesn't maintain a thankful spirit to someone outside of themselves is in danger of being self-reliant, self-sufficient, and ultimately deluded. There's a great, Charles Brown wrote this in a newspaper, a newsletter, excuse me, called The Content, but he was writing about the ten lepers. You remember the story in the Bible where Jesus healed those ten lepers and they all were running on their way to the priest and, and they, on the way the leprosy was gone and the Bible said that one of them came back and said, Thank you, Jesus, right? And Jesus said, hey, didn't I heal ten guys? Where's the other nine, right? And the story is a great illustration of thankfulness and the intentional nature that's necessary to please God. One man speculated, what do you think the other nine guys thought? What do you think kept them from being thankful? Here's some modern ways I think we might approach this. One of these men waited to see if the cure was real. Anybody want to be thankful, but you're very cautious? I'm this guy, right? Oh, this is great, isn't it? I'm like, we'll see, you know, we'll see, you know. Get a big check in the mail. Oh, man, we'll, we'll see if it clears, you know. You get it. Oh, this is going to happen. Oh, I don't know. I see that guy said it all the time. I don't believe it. Anybody like that? You cautious? This happened. Wait to see if it's real. You could be like this. One person's not thankful because they wanted to see if it would last. Perhaps one of these men was thankful because he thought, I'll see Jesus later. So he didn't come back to thank the Lord. One individual, he decided what he had was never leprosy at all. <laughs> right? Oh, just probably just a fluke, right? One man, he would have gotten well anyways, right? This guy's leprosy. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, how, what do you think goes through a person's mind when they're not thankful for what they've received? Aren't these some of those attitudes that we're often guilty of? One of them gave glory to the priests. Remember, because they went to reveal themselves to the priests? Jesus healed them on the way. They decided maybe it wasn't Jesus, maybe it was the priests. One of them said, oh, well, Jesus didn't really have to do anything. Right? Are you ever unthankful because you didn't think it constituted enough effort on another person's part? I tell you this, this, Americans that are poor are really famous for this, right? Look at rich people and they're like, well, they were rich anyways. right? You ever heard somebody, they go, oh, well, they got lots of money. Do you see what we do a lot of times? Thankfulness, we scale it, don't we? 
We have this kind of attitude like maybe if somebody helps you and you should be thankful, you're like, well, they, what did they really do anyways? And that, we've seen that before in the Bible. What have you done to me? One, another one said, any rabbi could have done that. Anybody could have done it. See, these are a lot of reasons that people aren't thankful to the Lord. Lastly, one said, I was already much improved. And I think that these are great illustrations of the attitudes that stop us from having thanksgiving. We have a tendency, if we are not watchful in thanksgiving, we have a tendency to forget where blessings really come from. And the Bible teaches us we cannot be neutral on thankfulness. We've got to be intentional. We've got to be in gear. Christians, you've got to get up, and you've got to decide what you're thankful for, and you need to decide where that came from. Oh, I did this with my own strength, with my own power. Watch out. The Bible says be watchful. See, we need, we need even in times of success, we need to be watchful in thanksgiving because it's possible that we will delude ourselves. And how often have you deluded yourself? I mean, let's be honest. If you're anything like me, how many times have you come over a series of of moments or days or hours or months or years come to a wrong way of thinking because you could. Anybody here ever do that? Like, and then you're like, and then you like some like wake up moment and you're like, oh yeah, that's right. I knew that. How did I get here? And the Bible teaches us that we, we can go a lot of places in our life if we're not thankful. And again, notice this, in, this link between prayer and thankfulness. Do you see it? It's almost like you can't pray without being thankful. What? How many of you think a lot of us, when we pray, we might do a lot better if we were more thankful than we were asking? And this is what the Lord is teaching us. I think he says, watch with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving checks our prayers. It checks our attitude. It checks our mentality. It checks our desires, right? I mean, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Thankfulness, and again, that's why we have this day, isn't it? Isn't that what this week's about? We're going to have Thanksgiving. We're going to give it to our family. And I mean, let's face it, it's not really about turkey, right? I mean, it can't be. It's got to be better than that, right? I mean, there's got to be things in this life better than turkey. Like beef, right? I, or ham. I'm just saying, what's, what's so funny, though, is sometimes we forget what this day is all about. It's all, why would a country say, I think we need to have a day where all we do is be thankful. Well, why don't you look around right now? Why do you think Thanksgiving used to be a big deal? Anybody ever wonder if Americans didn't skip Thanksgiving and go straight to Christmas, if there'd be a little less wantonness in the streets? Rioting and destruction. I think it's so, so crazy to me. I, when I look around and I see people destroying our culture, you know what I think, first thing I think? Un- thankful ungrateful how you know it's just, just so un- i want this and i remember looting somebody's store and there's all kind of people in the world making excuses for that but the bible teaches us you know what that is that's ingratitude christians don't you get caught up in this kind of social justice that tries to make everybody equal thankfulness is what makes believers succeed you have exactly what god wants you to have and if you work your best at that you're gonna you get as much more that god wants you to have and it's not right the way that people are living and we do this don't we're already talking about christmas don't you think that's part of the problem we're decorating for christmas before thanksgiving while we're tearing our country down because we hate the electoral we hate everything else everything we hate the voting we hate everything why ungrateful man i wonder i we should be thankful right we should be thankful and we got to be careful christians today that even even when we're even when we have disagreements that is, comes from a place of gratitude, right? Comes from a place of gratitude. Be, watch out. In the times of the watching, in the Zoom, we've got to be thankful. Somebody says, well, don't those people have a reasonable beef? Well, sure, if they're not thankful. And, and to just be clear, it's okay for people to want more. The Bible says you're supposed, when you have a trouble, what are you supposed to do? Go to God and ask Him and even beg Him but make sure you're thankful. Doesn't that change the way we change? We're going to change the world, we do it through a thankful heart. Christians, we don't do that. We don't change the world by destroying. We change the world by building. Lastly, we need to be thankful 
in times of wealth. We'll be thankful in times of worry, thankful in the times of watching, thankful in the times of wealth. Here's what happens. Be careful when you're riding high. Don't forget to be thankful to the Lord. Turn with me to the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse number 17. Oh, excuse me, I, I've skipped ahead here. Colossians 2, 7. Let's go there. Colossians 2, 7. <clears throat> It says, and this and this is what this is like. This is like the, the ultimate for believers, right? This is what God wants for us. He wants us to. This is where we. You know, you're succeeding in God when this becomes real. Colossians two seven. He says, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So He gives us this great tree illustration, doesn't He? Or a plant, right? The roots go down, right, into the word, into truth, into what's right. Out of that depth, out of the, the foundation on what is right, on what is true, the tree grows up, right? And built up. And thereby is established. Do you ever have a plant and you stopped watering it and the next day it looks like it's gonna die? But out here in the field, there's a couple of trees that have been around for a hundred years, right? And you don't water those trees. Now, somebody, God waters those trees. We'll be thankful for that, right? But they stand a the test of time, don't they? Everything, every little change in the weather does not destroy these things, right? These, these great trees. Why? Because they're rooted and built up. They've grown. They've become established in the faith. So-called Christians are supposed to be like that. You know, some of the bad things aren't supposed to happen, and then you're supposed to wither as a Christian. That's a sign of failing, right? Of, of new Christianity, of a Christianity that's not really built you know, properly on the Lord. We're supposed to be able to withstand hard times. If a Christian ever betrayed you or, or seemed like a hypocrite or, or cast away their faith because something bad happened, what's the problem? Right? Artificial, right? They're not, they're not down, they're not rooted, they're not built up, they're not flourishing in the Lord. Now they can, we can all turn and repent and those things can be wonderful, but we're talking here about this right kind of living. He has this illustration, rooted, built up, Right? The trees, you can see it growing up, established as you have been taught. And what does he say? Abounding therein with what? Thanksgiving. You know, the Christian, you're supposed to be like this. It's just like when you get where you're going, you're supposed to be grateful. Grateful. Gratefulness is the end of faith, not just the beginning. Man, hard times come. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, thank you for what I have. Please help me. I'm going to be thankful, Lord. I'm trying to count my blessings. I want to make it through here. And then you're in the mundane, then between time where you're growing and, and maybe just trying to watch, trying to watch out for the troubles. You're supposed to be watching with thankfulness. And finally, you're where you're supposed to be, and your life is flourishing, and your faith is flourishing. Thankfulness doesn't end there. It abounds there. Abounding with thanksgiving. Somebody said the fruit of the Spirit is, and it's all these things, but the Bible teaches us here that on this tree, the tree of faith, right, and one way to look at it is this, that the fruit of a lifestyle in Jesus Christ is an abundance of thanksgiving. You got a tree that you got to call your neighbors to help you get the fruit off because it's bothering you because it's all over the ground? We call that abundance. Thanksgiving. You should be like that. You ought to, Christians, if you're really successful in Christ, you'll know when other people got to come around to pick up some of the thanksgiving because it's coming, it's all over the place, right? And it's starting to be contagious. The Bible teaches that, full to overflowing thankfulness. So, like I said in the beginning, we're talking about the universal application, right? What are the benefits of thanksgiving we've seen in these times? Thanksgiving, it can give you peace in difficult times. It can keep you watchful in the mundane times. It can influence others and be a blessing to all those around you to make you an influencer in the high times. See, this is, we call this the universal application of thankful thinking. We'll simplify it just like this. God said, in everything. In everything. Thank you, Lord. A Christian that's not grateful is not being a proper Christian. And I need to remember that sometimes when I get mad or ungrateful. Hey, what, I'm, not a, I'm not grateful. Something, I'm doing something wrong. Be a thankful believer. This is not about one day 
or one week or even one year. A lifestyle of thankfulness is the inheritance of the believer. Let's look down to Colossians 3.17. It says this, And whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Man, isn't that great? We talk about in the name of Jesus. How many have been, this is really popular right now, doing things in the name. Everything in the name of Christ should be done with what? Thanksgiving. Remember Jesus said, if you pray for anything in my name, you'll have it. You guys remember that? Remember Jesus said that? He says, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, you will receive it. Now, some of you find that confusing because you asked, you said, in the name of Jesus, give me a Lamborghini, right? And then you were like, what happened? What did I miss? There's some, there's, here's a facet of praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Thankfulness. See, we do that. We take one verse, narrow, which are broad application without all of the realities. A thankful Christian is not in the will of God, cannot be in the name of God, cannot have what God has for him. So be thankful. Whatever you do, wherever you are, whatever difficulties assail you, thankfulness, again, as a Christian, we always have a reason to be thankful. We always have a right to be thankful. And we always have the requirement to thank the Lord for everything that we have. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that we can come together in your name. I pray, Lord, that you would make us a thankful group. Lord, just help this.